The quality of the responses you get from AI chatbots is largely a function of the quality of your prompts. So I'm going to share a framework you can use to write highly effective prompts to get the most useful responses. It's called the Who, Why, What, How framework, and it's carefully designed to help you provide all the information the chatbot needs and in the format it'll best comprehend. And beyond your one-off conversations with chatbots, this framework really shines when you use it to create custom GPTs, which I consider to be the best way to get the most from AI at this point in its evolution. And I dive into custom GPTs in other tutorials. So you can think of AI chatbots as spheres containing information. To respond to your prompt, they can take any direction within that sphere across four different dimensions. So the goal of prompting is to guide the AI to the location within the sphere of the most useful response. And by providing plenty of context, you point it in the right direction. And by specifying constraints, you keep it from veering off course. So the more abundant and specific your instruction, the closer the chatbot will land to your ideal outcome. And that's why you want to provide the who, why, what, and how. And I'm going to break those down into smaller rules with a handful of examples for each one. And not every rule applies to every prompt you write, but the more boxes you can check, the better the chatbot will serve your needs. And for your reference, as you practice this method, you'll find all the rules and even more examples available as a cheat sheet on Productivity Nexus. It's linked in the YouTube description. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the newsletter for more insights at the intersection of systemization, automation, and AI. So first, let's cover a few general strategies that apply throughout your prompt. Before you can guide the AI to your destination, it's important to articulate that destination for yourself. Consider your ideal output, then keep it in mind as you compose your prompt. So for example, my document will be completely free of spelling or grammar errors, or I will fully understand recursion in JavaScript, including how and when to use it. And then I know it can feel like you're being rude, but because large language models essentially pick the most likely next word after your prompt, it's better to frame your prompt as instructions rather than questions. So rather than asking what's the best way to fold a fitted sheet, say you will teach me the easiest way to fold a fitted sheet. And then AIs will understand your prompts better if you break them into labeled sections. And the best way to do that is using what's called the XML syntax. So mark the beginning of a section by placing its label within angled brackets. And then close the section the same way, but with a forward slash or the word end before the label. And this is especially important when providing material for the bot to reference, like the content it's correcting or examples to follow. Now let's get into the who, why, what, how. For the who, you assign roles to the bot, yourself, and possibly the audience of the generated content. And the bot's role is most important. You should begin almost every prompt by assigning the bot a role. Be specific and include qualifiers for the context within the role. So that could be, you're a modern marketing and branding professional within the tech industry. You're hip and original and never generic or cliche or your lawyer specializing in the needs of individual business owners and independent contractors. And then in many cases, it's also helpful to give yourself a role. In a sense, the chatbot is your assistant, so explain the context in which it's assisting you. So you could say, I'm an intermediate JavaScript developer honing my skills as I build applications through experimentation. Or I'm a tech entrepreneur with a new business idea. And then if the chatbot's generated content is intended for an audience other than yourself, describe that audience. So that could be ambitious business professionals aiming to leverage modern digital tools to increase efficiency and productivity. They use apps well, but they can't code. They have no understanding of the technologies behind the apps they use. Or the audience could be new mothers concerned about the impact of emerging technologies on their children, like social media and AI. And then the why is your ultimate objective. You can add helpful context by first explaining the problem you need to resolve. Why are you seeking support from the chatbot? You can build on the role that you assigned yourself. So that could be, I'm struggling to grasp the concept of recursion in JavaScript. Or I have a coworker who repeatedly misses deadlines and delays communication at the expense of our client relationships. And then share with the bot that ideal outcome you defined before beginning your prompt. So that could take the form of, you will help me fully understand recursion in JavaScript, including how to use it and when it's useful. Or you will draft an email that conveys my frustration in a way that's respectful, uplifting, and positive for my relationship with my coworker. 
And then you want to tell the bot what it will be generating in terms of its format and composition. Describe the look and feel of the response you're seeking, like its length, layout, and tone. And here, it's especially important to include examples. You can attach files or use that XML syntax. So for length, you could say, it should be between 500 and 600 words. Your minimum is 500 words. Your maximum is 600 words. And for tone, you could say, write in the style of Ernest Hemingway. It's marked by simplicity and brevity. Reference the attached examples. And for format, you could say, format your response as a bullet list. Each bullet will comprise a maximum of three sentences. And then lastly, tell the bot how to approach your request. Prescribe a method and supply resources for it to reference. So these AI chatbots will interpret your requests more accurately if you break them into a sequence of smaller steps. So for a decision-making prompt, that could be clearly state the decision to be made, list the options or choices available, outline the criteria for evaluating each option, compare the options against the criteria using a table format, and then select the best option and explain the reasoning behind the choice. And depending on the nature of your prompt, you may need up-to-date information. Remember, the data that AI is trained on cuts off at a certain point in the past. But increasingly, these chatbots are getting access to the live web. And sometimes they'll search automatically, but if you know you need live information, it's helpful to request it explicitly in your prompt. And then at the end, you want to supply those resources you've asked the chatbot to reference. That could be the content it's analyzing or examples to inspire the composition of the output. You can attach the content or paste it within those XML tags. And after the bot's initial response, you'll almost always want to refine it through follow-up requests. And if you ask it to review its response on its own to identify and correct any mistakes, in many cases, it'll make corrections. And just as commonly, you'll spot errors yourself or want to make a correction or qualification to your request. And in some cases, it's better to edit the original prompt with your qualified instruction than have the bot regenerate its response rather than adding to the conversation. That keeps the unwanted response out of the conversation history. So to come up with example prompts that utilize this framework, I fed it to ChatGBT, Gemini, and Claude. And their responses were spot on. So I'll read a short one here, but be sure to visit the post on Productivity Nexus to see them all for inspiring your own prompts as you practice the framework. So this one from ChatGPT says, you are a professional presentation designer who excels at creating visually compelling and persuasive slides for corporate audiences. I'm a business analyst preparing a presentation for executives on our department's quarterly performance and future goals. And the audience consists of C-level executives who value data-driven insights and concise visuals. The problem is that I need to present our performance highlights and strategic priorities in a way that's impactful and easy to follow, but I'm struggling to organize my content effectively. Your goal is to outline the slide deck structure for a 10-minute presentation. Create an outline for a slide deck with 8 to 10 slides, including a title slide, an executive summary, key achievements, challenges faced, proposed solutions, future goals, a budget overview, and a conclusion. The outline should include a brief description of the content for each slide. Start by identifying the main message for each slide. Provide suggestions for visuals or charts where appropriate and end with recommendations for a compelling closing statement. So you can see how this framework facilitates your composition of really powerful prompts that lead to much more useful responses and unlock the full power of these AI chatbots. Keep the cheat sheet handy for reference and subscribe to the Productivity Nexus newsletter for more insights at the intersection of AI, automation, and systemization.